Right, back there a little bit. I've dug up this old bottle. I've got it in my rucksack now. I took a picture of it. Uh, I wouldn't have bothered, but it did look oldish. But there did look like an old tin in there as well. It'd been there, well, I don't know how long it'd been, but been there. Um, it looked like an old tobacco tin. So whether someone had put it in there as a remembrance or someone, I don't know. But it surfaced. And I've seen it sticking out. i only seen a bit of it. It took me about a quarter of an hour to dig it out properly. That's where being in the brownies helped. It always carried me. We always had little pen knives. Even when we were at school, you know, we had little pen knives with little silver handles. Little girly ones. I've still got mine. Made of sort of oyster pearl stuff. We used to have them in our pencil cases, so sharpening our pencils. You know, if you if no one had a pencil sharpener or it was allowed then, it wasn't even seen as a like a weapon or anything. And I'm talking about in the sixties when I was at school. Yeah, I've still got those little silver pen knives. Those pearly pen knives. <sighs> yeah, we got away with Well, we didn't get away with it. Nobody knew about health and safety in those days. And uh, you didn't get the attacks that you get in schools now. Um, well, you didn't in a, in a small town. Maybe you did in Glasgow, Manchester and London. Who knows? Well, it's nice to bring home a bit of treasure, but of course the only problem is, it's quite thick glass, it's quite heavy. So though my bag was getting lighter, I've now got for, I'm not quite halfway around my course yet. And I won't be until I get to Velvet Bottom. That's halfway. Yeah, this is a nice little peaceful track along here uh, and in a minute we'll come to the gate that leads you to Longfield what I call Longfield because it is very long near Longwood and where my sheepies live but I won't be going through there today and I'll think oh here she is she's coming in here and I'll say no not today I'm going to Velvet Bottom, so I'm turning right instead of left. Yeah, it's quite nice to go down into the wood. I can just see two people now with hats on. Oh, they're going off now. There's a few of them. They didn't stop to say hello, did they? Saw me coming on my own, talking to myself. They thought, ah, oh, that's a bloody nutter. And we are there. Yeah, God, there's a bunch of them. Five or six of them. Alright, so this is the path I quite often walk up. I could end up walking up it yet. Who knows? No, I mean, I, want, I did really want to do velvet bottom walking in a clockwise type position. But uh, I changed my mind. And I thought... Sometimes I, I, I come back the same way, you see. So it depends what I feel like. Whether I'm going to do the hike round. Or whether I'm going to backtrack it will depend on what the weather looks like how I'm feeling uh, and the time of course the time is very important I'll just check the time now so anyway over there look all that is longwood in there 
although the wild garlic and the bluebells have all died away now, you can still smell the garlic. They're still not as potent as what it was when I visited during the beautiful display of bluebells and garlic. That was very intoxicating, but beautiful. But you can still, still in the air. Breathe in the air. Breathe in the oxygen that's around us, folks. <sighs> now, see, that was a pack of about six people. i just seen the back of them going off. But I prefer, I, I actually like walking by myself. I don't mind. It would. It's a completely different walk. I mean, if you do a walk with others, I will do it. Um, but not. I prefer it on my own because I can stop when I want. Look at that. This is all the wild garlic, and you can still smell it. You can still smell it, everyone. It's quarter past twelve now, so I'm only quarter of an hour off target. Give us a six hours. Um, there's a little bit of hill walking to do after we leave over at bottom and climb up towards the wireless station. There's a little bit then. Then we will walk across the area of Outstanding Beauty, which could be extremely hot because it's, there's no shelter whatsoever up there. Um, I've got, I can always turn off at different stages if I decide it's going to turn to thunder or there's, I'm tired or uh, whatever. But um, at this stage of the walk, I always, f I am getting, feeling better each minute at the moment. Not feeling tired at all. I've just got into my stride now. And it's quite nice to actually touch on grit on the wood. It's quite nice to actually touch on it and say hello to the trees. This is where all the potholes are. Of course, we've got that um, situation going on in Thailand at the moment where 13 schoolboys, around about the ages of 11, 12, 13, uh, went into a set of caves with their trainer, football, they were a football team. And they'd been out on their bikes and all that and they decided to have a look in the caves. Then there was a downpour of rain and uh, they found that their, the tunnel behind them was filling up with water so they tried to they, they went deeper and deeper in to find a higher place and they'd been there for about nine days they got plenty of water of course but no food they had no, only what they had with them and they've only just been found and there are quite a long way inside the caves which have narrow um, English divers have gone in to and uh, located them they've got medics with them now they've got food, they've got blankets um, but the problem is in Thailand you get these tropical rainstorms and they're due as well so they're, what they're doing they're, gonna, they're training the boys how to dive but they're going to have to wear oxygen masks full oxygen face masks and um, they'll be taken out one at a time it's going to take three hours apparently to complete the journey um, so it's all, all the parents everybody they've got they're in touch with their parents they've got all the the system in place there's somebody coming now so I'm going to have to turn off again in a minute there's all the system in place so they can communicate with their families. But what a hairy time. So these little footballers, they're all well apparently, but they've lost a bit of weight. Um, when the World Cup's going on as well. Right, I've come down to a gate now. I'm going to go through that and then I'll be at Velvet Bottom. I'm turning off now because somebody's coming. <laughs>